we know a lot of single people who want to be hitched. So if y'all are watching, we're not talking about you, okay? <laughs> A lot of people out here looking for love. That's why they're crazy enough to go on these shows where they marry strangers. Hey, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> but before we take such extreme measures, there are some bases we need to cover now, some practical things. So let's dive into the top five reasons that adults stay single and not by choice and what they can do about it. So we want you to share this video with the single adults that you know that want to be married, that are waiting for that significant other, send them this video just in case they fall in one of these five categories, okay? And make sure y'all stay to the end because this is some deep stuff, y'all. Today we're talking about five things that can keep you single forever and how to fix those things so that you don't have to deal with that if you don't want to. So it's gonna be interesting. We've been married, of course, for seven years. Our parents have, both sets of parents have been married for over 30 years. Yeah. So we've kind of seen it up close. That's a lot of marriage. Yeah, a lot of, <laughs> well, a lot of years, a lot of years. I mean, that's a lot of time in marriage. Your parents, my parents, yep. together, this. 60 something years right there of experience. Damn. <laughs> and so we're gonna just talk about five things. If you fall into one of these five categories, <laughs> it's okay. You know, it ain't the end of the world. <laughs> you can just become aware right. of it and make some adjustments. That's right. all. But we're not here to tear anybody down, but to shed some light. Shed some light for some insight. Almost like a rap line, huh? I know you caught it. <laughs> this is what I have to deal with, guys. <laughs> He loves it. He loves it. Isn't that right? Oh, I'm absolutely. This it. is the face of a man that loves it. <sighs> Y'all, he simply adores it. I light up his. You, you light up my life. That's what he's singing right here. Help me. Help me. <laughs> So if you haven't yet seen our love story to get a little more background on us as a couple, make sure you check that out, as well as our video, why I picked my wife or why I chose my husband. We made the videos together, but you get either side of the perspective. After watching this video, if you are still seriously desiring marriage, make sure you check out our video, How We Dated to Marry. And we are linking all those videos below. So we're about to jump right in. But if you want more content on relationships and lifestyle, make sure you click the like button, hit subscribe, click the bell for notifications so you don't miss an upload because we upload new content every week, y'all. And when you subscribe, make sure you leave us a comment saying, I subscribe, and we'll be more than happy to reach out to you personally and thank you for joining the family. But as you know, we shout out one of our subs every week. Today, we're shouting out Victoria. Thanks so much for being a part of our community mm -hmm. and for commenting and watching our videos and letting us know what you think. We really appreciate you, Victoria. Thanks, Victoria. So y'all, we are going to start with the obvious and then we're going to dig deeper, y'all. We're going to take it there, okay? Yes, we're going to talk about Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. Okay, if you haven't seen the movie, sorry. <laughs> You're wondering if I had a little something extra this morning in my tea. I'm no, trying to figure out you've been... It's called joy. Hitting. It's uh, <laughs> No, never done that in my life. I don't believe you. Got that internal. <laughs> <coughs> That's how you're acting. Oh uh -huh, no, I'm just I'm just joyful today. <laughs> Number one, not networking. Until I've simply decided I am never leaving my house again. That's a big one. And, and honestly, that was probably one of my biggest ones mm. that was hindering me is because I don't have to go out and find and meet new people. Mm. And, and I think a lot of introverted people probably experience mm. something similar. It can be difficult to go out of your way, mm. go to places full of people you don't know. Yeah. Um, if you're anything like me, you know that sometimes that can create anxiety within itself. It's like, man, there's a lot of people. I don't know none mm. of these people. I don't know who to waste my time on, who not to. But you're likely not going to marry somebody that lives in your own house. Oh, no. No, 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 no. We try not to do that, though. No we try not to do that. No I hope not. So you got to leave the house to meet somebody. 
You do. You and do. you can't just keep seeing the same people every day. So you just go to work in your cubicle with your same 10 co-workers on your floor and go home. So if you don't meet new people, you definitely limit your pool of options. You got to meet new people. So networking, obviously doing networking online has gotten a lot easier from what I'm told. I've not really done a lot of that and done well with that even when I was single. But I think it's gotten better or easier now is what it seems like. I don't know. But if not, go to networking events, business meetups and all this. Stuff. People have similar interests and you can mm -hmm. find people there at the very least, you're just finding a contact. You might get lucky and find a potential mate. So be open to certain networking events, business events, concerts. You might meet new people. And honestly, socializing in general, because it may not even be that you meet that person, but you meet that person's best friend yeah. or you meet that person's cousin. And then if they get a feel of who you are and get a feel of what you're looking for, they might say, wait a minute, I think I know a person that fits that description. So that's what happened for the two of us that someone that was connected to us knew someone that would be perfect for us. <laughs> Both of our networks, our family and friends, they knew us and they also knew what we were looking for. When they found our spouse, <laughs> they let us know that, hey, I think I found him. It looks like he fits the description pretty well. <laughs> That's right. So we're a strong believer in the power of community and networking, but also vocalize what it is that you're looking for and the type of mate that you plan to be because someone in your circle might already know your spouse. And often it is that way. Yeah. Often someone you know knows your spouse. And then network in the type of places that the type of person you're looking for might be. Yep. So if you're looking for someone with like faith, maybe try church. <laughs> In different churches. Yeah, different churches. And if you're looking for businessmen, maybe network at steakhouses where they go for lunch or some of their networking events. So just being mindful of the type of person that you may be looking for and whether that's someone is already within your network or someone that you can find in a particular type of space that you may not be yet tapping into. Number two, unreasonable expectations. Yeah. Unreasonable yeah. expectations. This could be something where you feel like sometimes for a man, he wants the woman out of this, the catalog. <laughs> There's only one Beyonce. You can't have her. You know, she's already married. You know? be like, I want her to be like half Puerto Rican, half Filipino. And half Puerto, hair, Rican, half, Puerto Rican, half Puerto Rican, half Puerto Rican, half Filipino, <laughs> half black, and, and, and half white. He wants four halves in, in one person. She need to have this feature, that feature. Super smart. She can build an empire. She's very capable. But then also she does everything I want. She does everything I want her to do all the time. <laughs> knows how to save the world <laughs> on the back end. Now, and, and for the women, same thing. This guy, you know, I just don't think it's unreasonable for me to have a man that was a millionaire. <laughs> and you know, I don't make no money, but he should have a billion dollars plus or, you know, I annually. Would, I want someone with the physique of the rock, <laughs> but I only make it to the gym in January. Part of January. <laughs> And just an unrealistic expectation that, oh, I want them to be with something that they do. For women, it's typically status, money, and then nowadays throw in a lot of looks too. <laughs> but the point is sometimes our expectations or standards can be set by social media and who is hashtag relationship goals. And I know females even who have unrealistic expectations for what a date should look like. Oh, yeah. Based off what they have seen on social media. It's so, like, man. Well, this guy does all this for his girl and you're a little too basic. You're not really showing me Dinner that I'm not much of a gen. You're you know? supposed to take me skydiving. It's you're like... supposed to be more creative than that. But we have to understand that the things that we set as our expectations, as our deal breakers, some of those things are nice icing on top, but shouldn't actually be our deal breakers for what will make a healthy and lasting relationship. And there are some things that we can work with the person on so that they 
they can speak our love languages, that we can communicate and express ourselves so that each person feels like they are being served in the way that makes them feel most loved. But we shouldn't just expect that they're going to have all this right off the bat because according to this show or according to this celebrity couple or according to this Instagram couple, then this is what a fabulous relationship looks like where your man goes all out for you. He's dressed to the T all the time. Sometimes you need to go shopping for your man and help them to have style. Say what? Oh. <laughs> So we shouldn't always just expect that that person has all these little things that might even be superficial. And that doesn't mean they're all bad, but not just expecting that he comes in this perfectly wrapped package right off the bat based off of things we've seen. Yeah, that's true. My wife didn't like how I was dressed initially. So she no. took me shopping. <laughs> and likewise, I didn't like how she was dressed. <laughs> Quit playing. You know this. Do not okay, play. Okay, I dressed down on the first date because I no. wanted to make sure that he loved me for me and <laughs> not what I looked like. But you, that's another story. That's another conversation. You did dress. You dressed. <laughs> nah, that wasn't just on the first date. I told you I didn't like them vests. No, them jacket no, vests you kept no, wearing. No, you no, kept no, wearing no. those vests I kept telling you I didn't now, like The second them. date, you were drooling. Come on. It doesn't come matter. On. I didn't like how you dressed over all. I was wearing that leather peplum top. And I started heels. shopping for her. I started shopping from her. Oh, butt. don't even try to come from my style. Okay. You did not appreciate the vest, but that was a style. Thank you very much. That was in style. Nah. But just because you didn't appreciate the vest does not mean I didn't know how to dress. You know I know how to dress. I, didn't like I dressed it. you. I know how to dress too. But you didn't like how I was dressed. Help. No, I was dressed. You were I was one of the flyest people in high school. school. You were wearing uh, precisely. You were wearing the same outfits from high school. You were you wearing styles new. from high school. You had nothing new. You were okay, wearing styles from high school. Okay, apparently we need to move on, guys. So we're getting here's inside the, thing. the point. <laughs> Unreasonable expectations. <laughs> she wasn't as fly as she thought she was. I had to I had to step her game up mm. and and redo the the wardrobe, the closet. But that's nothing. That's neither here nor there. It's absolutely true. Neither here nor there, though. The point is, What's you just have to you have to see people's potential. He doesn't have to make six hundred thousand dollars a year. Maybe sixty, seventy is enough, at least to start with. And maybe you guys can figure it out from there. Same thing with the guys. You're not gonna find some of these models and stuff that you find on on television and on magazines because they're airbrushed and they are <laughs> edited. They, what are they? You guys have filters, right? I'm not on Instagram like that, but the thing is, people are using these filters, and you're comparing people like that. And not only filters, they're also getting plastic surgery. That's a whole nother yeah. discussion. Yeah. And you can't compare someone that's getting plastic surgery to look like a cartoon character, <laughs> which no hate if you get the plastic surgery. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not hating on it. I don't personally have a problem with it. I'm just saying, you can't hate on someone be like, oh man, she don't look like this person off of the magazine because she didn't get all of this work done on her and spend $20,000 on looking that way. People aren't born looking like that generally. Right. <laughs> there are a set of things that we should have as deal breakers. These are the important things. Mm -hmm. These are the things that my partner has to have. And if they don't have these things, we don't have anything else to talk about. And then the other things that well, can well, be changed. Well, a good example of a deal breaker is, let's say, your values. Let's say you have certain moral standards. Right, right. That would be a, or character uh, traits, such as being right. honest. Right. That should be a deal breaker for most people. Being family oriented. I want to have a family one day. I want to have kids one day. That's a deal breaker. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you want to have kids, you shouldn't be with someone that doesn't. It just seems like it would be a deal breaker. Being of like faith. Right. Having the same faith would be another deal breaker. Then some other things that may just be nice to have. These are things that we could change or we could work on or things that I never have, but we still have a happy, healthy relationship. Right. So that could be... Oh, I, it would have been nice to have someone that was bilingual, but he only know English. <laughs> right, 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 right. Or, or it would have been nice to have someone who's making six figures at 30 years old, but he's making 60. I yeah, can work that's with that. That's straight. You know? And so the question to pose to all those who are single waiting for that right person is that you're waiting for that right person, not that perfect person, because love is an unconditional commitment to an imperfect person. If we're ready for a relationship, we're ready for marriage, are you willing to accept an imperfect person and mature with them through the process? We all have to decide what flaws do I have grace for and which ones are deal breakers for me? Which ones can I not deal with? Like for me, I could not deal with someone who had problems in the area of fidelity. If the person was a cheater, 
that's not something I can deal with. Now, are they overcoming anger issues? Maybe. No one is perfect, but relationships require maturity and commitment. Number three is unhealed hurts or trauma from the past. I'm sure we've each got an issue balled up inside of us that would make us cry if we talked about it. A lot of people that are single because they are carrying the problems that they've dealt with and the pain that they yeah. dealt with from previous situations with loved ones or people that they've dated or issues even from their childhood into the present. And then every situation is just replaying that negative script or experience that they've had again yeah. and again and again. And we've all seen that type scenario in different people. Yeah. And we know like, oh, you're still dealing with something that right. had nothing to do with today or me has everything to do with something that you've experienced right. in the past. Right. So that could manifest in something like trust issues. Mm -hmm. So I'm a woman. Every man in my life has broken my trust in some way or has been dishonest or even has abandoned me. So now if you don't pick up the phone when I call, it's a trigger for me that you're hiding something or that Maybe you're trying to abandon me because I haven't talked to you since yesterday and every other man in my life has abandoned me. So sometimes the baggage of the past affects how we respond to people in the present and future. And we have to make sure to deal with those things to address those unhealed hurts. Counseling is something that some people just don't give enough attention to, mm -hmm. but some form of therapy to actually work through those traumas of the past, or even like every woman needs to think about the relationship that she has with her father and how that's going to affect the relationship with her husband. So if there are issues in that you know, daddy daughter relationship, make sure you deal with those ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Likewise, if a man didn't have a good relationship with his mom and had some issues there, he needs to make sure that those are addressed before getting married because it is likely that a man will treat his wife in a similar fashion to his mom. So everyone needs to keep in mind that whatever baggage that you're carrying, it is going to affect a close relationship. Sometimes it repels one. Some people that are single and wanting to be in a relationship, sometimes they're wondering why these committed relationships are just seeming to evade them. And sometimes it's something that is hurt in us that's actually repelling those close relationships because it's a defense mechanism. These walls that are going up, trying to protect ourselves from something. So we have to ask ourselves, what am I trying to protect myself from? And am I fully giving the opportunity to this person that they deserve? Or am I overreacting to something that they did in the present based on something that happened to me in the past? And these unhealed hurts can often lead to self-sabotage. A lot of people, they can't even imagine themselves in a situation for whatever reason, whether they feel like they're not worthy, mm -hmm. they don't think they're supposed to have something. Right. It's always been this way. I've never had mm -hmm. this thing. So it's, it's always gone wrong for me. So they go into an expectation that it's going to always mm -hmm. go wrong in the future. Mm -hmm. And so then they self-sabotage. They, they sabotage the situation mm -hmm. to create a self-fulfilling prophecy. And there's a lot of people that do that. They will do things to, to make the person abandon you. So they say, oh, everybody always abandons me. So they will like, put that out there and put a situation where the person mm -hmm. just cannot continue to support you so that you feel abandoned, right? Mm -hmm. Or everybody rejects me. They always end up rejecting me. They can't handle it. Well, then you start doing things to cause yourself to be either too needy or and it's not healthy for a relationship. And now the person's like, I can't be with this. No. I know. They'll get with people. You say, everybody betrays my trust. So you get with an untrustworthy person constantly. It reinforces this narrative that you have that it always happens like this. This is yeah. what people do to me. And you think that that will get you some type of pity and have people to feel bad for you and try to do you right. But what it does is it just reinforces itself in your own life mm -hmm. and you just continue to sabotage your own success and partially because it can be comfortable to stay in your problem. How you would respond to a functional and healthy relationship, maybe that's scary to you. 
It's like, I've only dealt with dysfunction. There's a level of comfort in knowing that the same thing is happening to you. It's some level of consistency there. So you may not even know how to deal with the possibility of things going well. Mm -hmm. And that could be scary. And subconsciously, as you're approaching it, you can be sabotaging it so that it doesn't work out because subconsciously you're, you're not sure if you're ready for that thing. Well, some people do have a fear of happiness and some people have a fear of being hurt that causes them to hurt the other person first so they don't have the opportunity to hurt me. That's true. Like, I'm going to cheat on you first so you don't have the opportunity to make me the victim. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's how a lot of players is born. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's a discussion for another day. And then some people have a fear of commitment and maybe it's because of other family relationships, even the failures of their parents in their marriage, they fear this ball and chain. And so they may avoid that commitment, even though they they say, I want this lifelong partner, but they are demonstrating that, you know what, I actually am afraid of connecting myself to this person for life. And then they could potentially harm me if things go south. Number four, refusal to learn. I find that Sometimes focusing not just on who you're seeking, but becoming the person that that person is looking for is more effective. I have a great example of a friend of mine who was only attracting men that were more passive and pushover type of men. You know, one day she was like, you know, after she broke up with her current boyfriend, she was like, I don't want that type of man anymore. And I said to her, well, you're going to have to make some adjustments because you're a little bossy. You have him doing all your grocery shopping for you, waiting on you hand and foot. <laughs> and the type of man that you want, you want this more macho masculine man. Well, he wants a woman that's going to be more flexible and accommodating and that's not going to boss him around. So she said, okay, I can do that. And she admitted that her mom had the dynamic of her marriage that she was the one wearing the pants in the relationship. And she, my friend felt like, you know what, that looks exhausting to me. I don't want that. So she made those adjustments and she actually like developed herself and she was able to attract a very masculine man who has great leadership skills and who's a wonderful leader of their family. And no, he's not waiting on her hand and foot. No, she's not bossing him around and things like that. And she's a wonderful person, very, very sweet person, but she acknowledged that she needed to make those adjustments for what she wanted and she did. And she has a beautiful family as a result. So deciding to make changes instead of always just expecting other people to change, help you to be in a great position for a healthy relationship. So refusal to learn, we have to learn from our mistakes. My question is, what is it that everyone else is saying about you that's negative. Everyone that's been in a relationship with you before, a romantic relationship, or even some of your friends, what do they say you need to work on? And that's called the Bob principle. If everybody is saying the same thing about Bob, Bob may be the problem. So we all have issues. That's no condemnation. All of us have things we need to work on, but instead of dismissing what people say you need to work on, oh, you have attitude. Everybody's saying I have attitude, but they're the ones with the problem. Well, if everybody else says that, then you probably need to work on your tone or the way that you frame your ideas because you may not mean it from your heart, but what people are telling you is that it's coming off that way. Making sure that we're constantly learning and growing from every relationship so that we're better and not just finger pointing because we're always saying, well, this never works out because this person has issues and everybody else is crazy. When you say everybody else is crazy, then that means there's, there's no accountability in that, but it always takes two to tango. If you have two people arguing back and forth, calling each other all types of names, one person is pointing the finger at the other while the other one is pointing the finger at the other one. Everything 
is always your fault. But it takes two to argue. It takes two to tango. So always take responsibility for your part because one day when you are in a relationship, you're going to need that same character trait that, you know what, I'm going to look for what it is I could have done wrong. Be very self-aware and be very humble. And that same thing that helps you to grow, to be in a position to attract a mate is the same thing that will help you to have a lasting, healthy marriage. What could I have done differently? What could I have done better? And then as long as we're ever growing and becoming better, the sky is the limit to how beautiful and healthy that we can be as individuals and then as couples. And I know that that's something my husband talks about that he did before he met me. At the end of the day, it goes back to some of the things we were talking about earlier. If you want a certain type of person, then you got to be that person's bait. You got to be what they want. Everyone's thinking about this is what I want. This is what I want. What does the person that you want, want? Yeah. And how can you be that? And I'm not talking about molding yourself for a particular person to be that person's desired. You can't do that. Yeah. But for a particular that's, that's type called, of person. That's called posing. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't just, oh, uh, Johnny wants this, so I'm going to be like that. Yeah. You know, or Janae wants that. You, you can't do that because that, that won't work. You, you can't pretend. But you can develop your character yeah. and characteristics in a way that a certain type of person, you want a high caliber person, what yeah. do they need? What are they looking for? If I was a, a woman and wanted to get with a man that was a business owner, for instance, well, what does a, a man that's a business owner want? What does he need? What is he looking for? If I was looking for a woman that would be willing to help with my businesses, what, what is she looking for? What would make her interested in helping my business? I hear guys say, I need someone that help me grow, we need to build. What would that type of woman need from you, right? What would make her buy into your business idea right. and be willing to support it and grow with it as well? Right. So you start having to become that type of person. And, and I did the same thing when I was probably 18 or 19 years old. I just prayed to God. I'm like, OK, God, what type of man do I need to be mm -hmm. for the type of woman that I had described? And I, as you guys can see in my previous videos where I talked about our love story, I wrote down a whole list of qualities I wanted in a woman. And it was 80 something items long. What? Yes, it's a lot it of items. Was. But I couldn't just think, okay, that's what I want. And I manifested it, as some people say. No, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't just manifest this thing. I prayed about it in faith, but I asked myself the hard questions. This is a high caliber woman I want. What does she want? And I didn't know her. I just knew what I wanted and the type of person I wanted. And I said, what is that type of person looking for? If I want a trustworthy woman, she's going to want me to be trustworthy. If I want a woman that was praying for me, then she she needs to know that I'm a man of faith. If I want a woman that can support some of my business endeavors and dreams, I got to have a business plan and right. be reliable and work on certain things and grow and have a vision for the, right. the plan that hopefully she will buy into. If I want her to be in shape and all of that and value health, I need to be value and health. So just different things. And you start looking at what is it that the other person may be looking for and how can I prepare myself ahead of time before I even see this yeah. person to be what they are looking for yeah. as they also are what I'm looking for. Yeah. So that's a win-win. Number five, low self-esteem. Mm. This one is an interesting one because low self-esteem is kind of like one of those things where sometimes people don't know how to overcome it, but also you think that it may get you additional pity that would make people feel sorry for you and want to be with you. All he does is try to make everybody else feel bad for him. It's kind of sad. Like you, mm -hmm. like I need some love, but it's yeah. just quite frankly unattractive. I had a friend of mine who used to say this thing. He said this phrase, it's bizarre, but in a weird way, it's true. And he used to just say, you know, the needy don't get their needs met. Mm. The needy kind of don't get their needs met. Mm. Now it's one thing to want something, mm -hmm. But it's a very different thing if you're needy about it. Mm. And if you look at various aspects of society, no matter what it is, it's true. The needy don't get their needs met. As a result, you feel as though having low self-esteem and not feeling good about yourself inwardly will cause someone from the outside to try to make you feel good about yourself mm. externally. That can't come from the outside consistently yeah. because no one has the emotional strength to yeah. continue to build a person up with yeah. low self-esteem constantly, constantly, particularly in a romantic relationship, you just, yeah. it's just unlikely and it usually develops a very unhealthy 
relationship in those situations. And so it's very important to identify and build your own self up. You want to pray about those things, but you also just encourage yourself, find things that you like about yourself. You should yeah. be able to find something that you like about yourself, that you love about yourself. Ask people around you, what do you like about me? And you start, oh, I have these qualities or I have this going for me. And you start focusing on that and changing your self-talk and even taking a few moments every day to speak out loud. I am a thoughtful, kind, generous person, and I really love myself. And that can yeah. shift the narrative in your own mind versus yeah. some people, you know, you've got a narrative. I never was good for anything. And you may have heard that from your parent or teacher or friend or situation, your mm -hmm. boss, you, you ain't good for nothing. So you just take that narrative. So you got to get a new narrative. I am a great person and people will be lucky to have me as a friend. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I'm better than other people. It just means that I am a good person. I'm a kind person. I'm generous. I'm really good at X, whatever that is. And it's really cool because everyone is good at something. Everyone is good for something. Yeah. And you can just begin to focus on those things and engage in the activities that make you feel good about yourself, that yeah. help you to feel like you're a winner. And as a result, it's attractive. Everybody loves to be around winners. Everyone likes to be around people that are confident. But people yeah. that are not confident, they get overlooked. And again, yeah, the needy don't get their needs met. Yeah. And so... It's best to just go ahead and start filling yourself yeah. up, recognizing I'm a good person. I'm, I'm a kind person. I'm a generous person. I'm a, I'm a loving person. Yeah. And yeah. I love myself. And other people will begin to love you, too. They'll begin yeah. to see the good in you yeah. because you see it first. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Very good. And sometimes not having that sense of self-worth causes you to become validated by another person seeking validation through that person's affection, through that person's desire for you. So then what happens if that person rejects you? What happens then to your self-esteem? Sometimes when our self-esteem or our self-worth is not based in the right thing, then it can easily be offset. It can easily be damaged. And then also it can cause us to place unrealistic expectations on a partner because we're looking to them to make us happy looking to them to make us confident, looking to them to make us love ourselves. And they can feel that. It's an unhealthy pressure, unhealthy expectation. And then we're actually needing from them more than what they can give us. We're needing from them and requiring from them, expecting from them more than what another human being was ever designed to give us. They were not designed to give us self-worth. So it's really two happy people coming together that make a happy relationship, not I'm unhappy and I'm looking for you to make me whole and make me happy and looking for you to make me feel feel confident about myself. And it always breaks my heart to see because it ends in a very vicious cycle, or shall I say it continues or perpetuates a very vicious cycle. So when we are in that place where we know that we typically use relationships to validate ourselves, to feel attractive or feel desired, and if we don't have that, then we don't have a sense of confidence in our own identity. That is the indication that we need to seek first who it is that God created us to be. Get confident in that. Get peace just being by ourselves. I got complete peace and joy by myself before I met the love of my life. And I was able to be a better partner for him when I wasn't expecting him to be my everything. No person can be your everything. So getting that confidence in who we are first is very important in order to be able to contribute to a healthy relationship and also make sure that we are not repelling people because we are putting an unhealthy expectation and weight on them to carry because they're carrying our self self-esteem or they are making us feel secure. A lot of times low self-esteem can breed insecurity and lack of trust in relationships. And people don't like to be with insecure people. No, they don't. To be honest, they just don't. So getting that first goes a very long way for a healthy and lasting relationship. Sometimes we are actually projecting our insecurities onto that other person. And it creates a lot of frustration and 
often damages the relationship sometimes beyond repair. Well, thanks so much for joining us, guys. Talking about the five main reasons that people stay single, that don't want to be single, and what are some things that we can do about it. If you haven't yet seen How We Dated to Marry, we are queuing that up for you next. And if you haven't already, make sure you click the like button, click subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss an upload. And when you subscribe, leave us a comment saying I subscribe so that we can reach out and thank you personally for joining the family. If you made it this far in the video, leave a comment saying you made it. Till next time, y'all. Peace.